Hello everyone, Hound Dog here, with you again in another historical aircraft from the past 100 years of U.S. Navy carrier aviation. Today is 15 February 1957, and we are in the Douglas F-5D Skylancer on board the USS Saratoga CV-60. Radio check, one, two, three, three, two, one, radio check. In September 1952, the U.S. Navy announced a requirement for a supersonic single-seat carrier-based day fighter with a top speed of Mach 1 at 35,000 feet, a climb rate of 25,000 feet per minute, and a 100 mile per hour or less landing speed. While speed, rate of climb, and combat sailing were important, the primary features desired minimum size, low gross weight, low initial cost, simplicity of concept, ease of maintenance, reliability, and versatility in the air-to-air -air combat role. At this time, the Navy was also keenly aware that their fighters were lagging behind the performance of existing Air Force fighters. Two months later, the Navy revised their new fighter specifications to increase the maximum speed to at least Mach 1.2 at 35,000 feet with an afterburning engine. Major competition came from the Vault F-8U Crusader, the Grumman F-11 Tiger, the upgraded twin-engine McDonnell F-3H Demon, which would eventually become the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II, the North American Navalized F-100 Super Saber, dubbed the Super Fury, and Douglas's proposal based on improvements to the existing supersonic F-4D Skyray just entering service. With some controversy, Vault was declared the winner of the competition, but on 16 October 1953, the Navy also issued Douglas a letter of intent for the construction of two prototypes designated F-4D-2N as backup in case of problems with the Vault design. As Douglas made improvements to the F-4D design, it soon became clear that the new design would result in a completely different aircraft. So the Navy assigned a new designation of F-5D and the new name Skylancer. The F-5D retained the delta wing plan form of the F-4D, but the wings were much thinner and the fuselage was eight foot longer. The wing was built with thicker reinforced skin correct the F-4D's tendency for dense dimples and depressions caused by high-speed maneuvering. The internal fuel capacity was doubled from 640 gallons to over 1,300 gallons. The fuselage was slimmer at the wing roots to improve the transonic flight characteristics. The air intakes were redesigned and a new V-edged cockpit windshield and canopy replaced the angular flat-topped units of the F-4D. A taller vertical tail was fitted and the landing gear track was widened by two and a half feet. The leading edge slats and rear control surfaces were also significantly changed. The inboard trailing edge trimmers next to the exhaust pipe were now flush with the trailing edge of the wing instead of extending sharply behind. The four 20 millimeter cannons in the wings were retained, but the primary armament was four sidewinder or two sparrow air-to-air -air guided missiles and a battery of spin-stabilized unguided two-inch rockets. An advanced X-24A radar fire control system was also added. The prototypes and the service test machines were powered by the Pratt & Whitney J-57 
rated at 10,200 pounds thrust with 16,000 pounds in afterburner. Production machines were planned to have the improved J57 rated at 10,700 pounds thrust and 16,900 pounds thrust with afterburner. Douglas was also investigating using the powerful General Electric J79 turbojet. Even before the Skylanchers' first flight on 21 April 1956, the Navy ordered nine pre-production service test aircraft and 51 production aircraft. The first Skylancer took off from Edwards Air Force Base with test pilot Robert Rand at the controls, and the aircraft easily exceeded the speed of sound, reaching 1,105 miles per hour. The following test flights further confirmed the F-5D Skylancer to be an excellent performer. On 1 March 1957, after two prototypes and two production examples had been constructed, the Navy canceled the F-5D Skylancer program. The final report by the program's Navy test pilot, Lieutenant Commander Alan B. Shepard, stated that the F-5D Skylancer had the same performance characteristics as the Balt F-8U Crusader and was not needed by the Navy. Some historians believe that politics also played a role in the decision to cancel since Douglas was already producing 80% of the Navy's combat aircraft with the A-3D Sky Warrior, the A-4D Skyhawk, the F-4D Sky Ray, and the A-D Sky Raider. Another contract award would have given Douglas a virtual monopoly. At the time, it was also the Navy's intent to use their sparse budget to invest more in the development of the upgraded Vault F8U-3 Crusader III and the McDonnell F4H Phantom II. The four Skylancers continued to fly in various military test programs until 1961, when two were grounded and the remaining two were transferred to NASA's Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base, California. One of the F-5Ds participated in the Air Force Dinosaur or Dynamic Soaring Space Program by Boeing Aircraft Company. The X-20 Dinosaur Craft was designed to be a piloted reusable space vehicle with swept delta wings that was launched into orbit by a Titan III booster and later glided to a safe landing back on Earth. NASA astronaut Neil Armstrong was the first to recognize that the Skylancer had a wing very similar to that of the proposed X-20, and soon the aircraft was being test flown to develop specific abort procedures to save the pilot and spacecraft in the event of a launch pad booster explosion. To practice the procedure, the test pilots would fly the Skylancer 200 feet above the desert floor at a speed of 500 knots, then pull a vertical 5G climb to 8,000 feet and roll upright for a gliding approach and landing on the Rogers Dry Lake bed that was marked like the landing strip at Cape Canaveral. All of the test pilots enjoyed practicing this maneuver in the Skylancer, and it was soon being taught in the Air Force Test Pilot School. The dinosaur program was canceled in December 1963, and one F-5D was sent to the Ames Research Center at Moffett Field, California, and fitted with an OG smooth curve delta wing for evaluation for the Concord SST supersonic transport program. The remaining Skylancer stayed at the NASA Flight Research Center and was used as a flight simulator and chase plane for the Northrop's manned flight M2F2 heavy lifting body space flight test program. It was retired in May 1970 and donated to the Neil A. Armstrong Museum in Ohio. Although the Douglas F-5D Skylancer would never participate in carrier qualifications or see operational service with the carrier Navy, it still deserves recognition for its contributions to the advancements in aviation and the manned space flight programs.